Okay, looks like I've gone live. Wow, maybe I did this thing right tonight. I'm have I've been having this big time, uh, you know, learn OBG, <laughs> OBS or whatever you call it. So hopefully, hopefully I'm live tonight, folks, and hopefully I can get this thing so I can see the uh, questions as they come up. If anyone has any questions, it says I have a few viewers maybe and some likes already, but I've I've not even done anything yet. So I'm going to keep an eye out here and I see, I'm going to pull this over here on the other side so I can keep an eye out, see a little bit better what I'm dealing with here. So, you know, apologies right up front if I have a dropout. There is a problem with our internet here. I went and bought a new modem today, not had a chance to install it yet. So that is coming. This microphone is in the way of the... Maybe not, maybe not terribly. So I've got two cameras. My thought was this one camera, that mic is just in the darn way, is that uh, the one camera, you could see the neck of the guitar a little bit better. The other one, you could see me a little better, maybe. So there we go. That one is just about the chords and stuff. And I had some uh, uh, kind of complaints last week that maybe um, I wasn't, you know, they couldn't see the chords really well enough, so I've tried to kind of alleviate that that this time or fix that. See, Eddie Phillips says, see you here. Great. C can you hear me, Eddie? Uh, send me a message, and, uh, you know, there's probably a delay on this chat thing, but uh, Eddie Phillips, see you here. So I guess Eddie's on. Uh, hopefully y'all are seeing that. Let me cover here and just peep on my, you can see down here at the bottom. Uh, I have a, uh, I have the, uh, did I make the thing go? Anyway, anyway, I'm not going to worry too much about it. So apparently, okay, I said, oh, he's hearing me just fine. Great. Eddie, I got a mic over here. I don't know how much that's mm -hmm. going to pick up. I got a mic over here. Hopefully I don't sound too bad tonight. That's the other thing. I was just trying to be really careful. I need to get a boom, a boom mic stand. I'm probably going to do that pretty soon. Right now I'm just using plain old standard mics like this, uh, condenser here. So last week we talked about the key of G. I'm going to do just a tad of review before we go into uh, into uh, some, ad some additional keys here. And the thing I promised last week that I didn't do, and I apologize for this, I was going to, I've got it this week. It should show me. Here's, an, here's Amazing Grace and here's the chords, chord changes and stuff. And I've done a little bit of trickiness here, a little bit of weirdness that uh, that that will teach you some stuff as a beginner that that will kind of impress people. It'll be just a little bit more fanciness, a little bit more extra uh, than uh, than than what you might get from a be beginner guitar player. So we got a little bit of that coming up. But what I've done, I've got the chords that we looked at last week. And I don't know if anybody's had trouble playing those. Um, and I, I realized, I think I just got Eddie watching right now, but there'll be people watch later. So, uh, what we did last week, we went over the key of G and the thing from a beginner guitar point of view, uh, that you have to start understanding pretty soon to play songs. Cause you want to play songs. You'll start playing songs soon. That's the, the thing I'm trying to do here is teach you not just guitar, but how to play songs and play them really fast is that songs are made up of keys. There are a key, and, and each key has its own chords that go with it. So the key of G, what I gave you here were some basic ones. I didn't give you fancy ones yet. I like to give to the first lesson, I like to see if people will dig in and learn how to play these chords that are called open chords. Now, the reason they're called open chords, uh, they're chords that can play, that use open strings. In other words, uh, right now, this, this would be full open playing nothing right and but but still this G that I'm playing here this G that you see over here that's the one I'm playing uh, has open strings in it it's in what we call an open position you'll hear guitar players guitar teachers say hey, so play that G in the open and that means they're going up here the reason they're doing it is G, the G can be played a lot of places G could be played here you know the G can be played down here G can be played here you know and, and um, that's part of what I'm going to teach you tonight is how those chords move around a little bit. And most guitar teachers would tell me I'm absolute crazy nut for springing what's called bar chords on people on the second lesson. I like people to know what's coming. 
and we're going to talk about a few bar chords tonight. Bar chords are what you use to to play in basically any key. I'm just double checking, making sure am I still live? Unable to connect to chat? Please try later. I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm hoping I'm still I'm still live. So anyway, the uh, the bar chords. Everybody wants to be able to do this fancy stuff down the neck. This. jam right learning the bar chords is sort of the key to doing that but you can't learn the bar chords till you learn these open chords so last week I gave you amazing grace and I'm trying to do gospel songs because they are uh, uh, I'm trying to say they are royalty free right these are old royalty free songs I gave you amazing grace and if we go back to the if you've if you've downloaded the, the chord sheet then you know you can go here and uh, here again. This is weird, isn't it? It's taking, the taking its time doing it. You, you can go here and see all the chords that I'm playing in Amazing Grace. So you can go download that and you can learn these chords. Now, I, I sort of purposefully did this. I started to put little pictures of the chords up here on Amazing Grace. But let's not let's not rob you of the of the challenge of getting those chords in your head rather than seeing a picture of them all the time, okay? So I'm, we're going to do Amazing Grace, key of G, and I'm going to play it one, one time, and then we're going to talk about going to another key, which is C, and we'll do that just in a minute. So, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Okay, so that's what we did last week. And I'm going to put this PDF out. Uh, sorry I didn't put it out last week, but I'll put it out this week. And you'll be able to go download that PDF. And now, but let's talk about C. And what I've done tonight, I've done, some, uh, done a few little twists and turns and a little bit of of a uh, you know mischief here on this amazing grace in C, so let's go ahead and look at first at the chords in C. And so we've got some of the chords you know already. You got C and a and G. We've not done F or A minor yet. We've done E minor, which is down there. We've done C seven already. Now you'll notice I've got a bunch of different Fs. I got an F up on the top line up here, and I got an F down here, and I got an F major seventh. It's called so. Uh, when I get into the key of C, I like to show people all these possibilities of ways to play this F chord because the F chord uh, for beginners usually is a little bit hard to play. So let's first now we know C, know that C C is going to be in the key of C, of course. Now F, you see where I've got the one and the one right beside each other here. That means that this one finger, this first finger, right? This is your second finger, your bird finger, your third finger, your ring finger. Your pinky is the fourth finger. So this one that's right here going over both of these strings, there you're going to play both of those strings with that one finger. Now there's different ways you can do that. You can uh, sometimes if you if you point your finger down this way, you can hold that finger over there. Usually people turn their finger just a little bit sideways though. Turn your finger just a little bit sideways. And and, and the thing you've got to remember is keep your elbow in class toward your body. And it makes it easier to reach this. You don't want you don't want to have the guitar up here and try to do, you can't do it that way. You got to kind of keep that neck out in front of you like that, and then you'll put your finger down it and you'll get the technique of this. You'll start to see you can't see it maybe on my finger there. I don't know if you can or not, but the strings hit sort of on this upper side here. So I'm not going straight down. I'm not going straight down like that. I'm kind of tilting my finger a little bit like that, right? And then I can reach with these, this two and three finger here and play this F chord. Now, so the first time you play it, F is a little bit difficult for most guitar players. It was, it was difficult for me. But it doesn't take long. You start to get the technique. You get the technique and you, and you work at it. Now you'll see I've got the uh, E note there with a red, uh, a red X on it. It means you, tr you don't play that E note in this. But you can play that A, that... that uh, doesn't sound terrible. 
probably not the best note to play, but you, you can play that note. But I usually play the bottom four strings if I'm playing F this way. Now, this is one of the first of what I call movable chords. So what you're doing there with that one, that those two ones side by side there together, you're creating what is called in the guitar world a bar, B-A-R-R. -R. Or you'll see it play bar, it's spelled bar, sometimes I'll spell it with one R, but the, the, um, the I guess the Italian way of, the, of how they first start teaching you classical guitars, they'll call it bar, B-A-R-R. -R. And so what you're playing there, it, it, when it's, anytime you hold more than one string, with one finger, you're creating what's called a bridge or a bar. So, you know, let's just say for fun, for this, for, for hoots here, we just go to the third fret and we put this first finger down all the way across. Now you can take this finger here and help it push down a little bit if you want to. And you, you don't usually go straight like that. You turn your finger a little bit like this. It's, it's this part of your finger, this part right here, if you can see my, my illustration. It's more up here than it is on the flat part of your finger. You actually turn your arm a little bit, and and you can you can hold that all. You can just practice that. Just go up and down the neck. Can I hold? Can I make all six string sounds? A lot of times I have to put this 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 finger here over the top when I'm doing that. But so that's called a bar. And the trick to doing a whole lot of chords we're going to learn down the line, particularly when you start to try to learn how to play lead guitar and little lead riffs and runs, you're going to have to be able to play that bar chord and know where the notes that are the, um, it's the primary notes off of that bar chord are. And that's how you learn how to play your lead. So... We're going to look at C, and, 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 and got, our, got our C chord, we got our F, and we got a G. Now already you might be hearing something you might have heard before. You might have heard something that goes like this. It's an old 50 song, right? Now, the way they probably played it was they take this F chord. It's what I call, I was going to tell you, it's movable. And once you get that F down... You can move that F up two frets, and you got a G. Wow. Now, we're on our way to learn some lead guitar once we get that principle down. Once we once we realize that we've got uh, that F moves up to a G. As a matter of fact, music works this way. It works like alphabet. Seven different notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then there's some sharps and flats in there. Actually, it's 12 notes all together that you got in all music. And it repeats over. So in the alphabet, what comes after F? G, right? The thing is, you get to G and it turns around and it goes back to A. So for instance, this F that we're learning tonight, if you move it up two frets, it goes to G. So what do you imagine happens when you get two more frets? We well, go to A. F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So we can just climb the neck. F, G, A, B. Now C is a little weird. There's not a, um, a what we call sharp or flat between them. I don't want to get too far ahead of things. But if I just move one fret now past that, I've got a C again. See, it just sounds like the same chord, just moved up higher, right? I've got some, uh, let's see, see you, Tony, just fine. Okay, okay. Hey, Tony, hey. Is it, uh, oh, Lisa. You lost me. Oh, you lost me. Okay. Lisa, I hope it's not because of the stream has died. I am still think I'm having some technical difficulties here. And anyway, hopefully, as a matter of fact, let me do something right quick. Let me go to YouTube and see if I can see my own stream here. Hang on a second. I'm just curious. It might help me to be able to see the, uh, the comments. Uh-oh. i got to mute this now. Uh -huh. Okay, now, I, I hope you can still hear me. <laughs> no, I don't know the notes yet. Okay, okay, hopefully, that can help us. Now, I can, now I can see the uh, the chat a little bit better because I got a, I got a YouTube screen. And so this is going to be weird. I'll show you what I got now. I'll scoot this over here where you can see. So now I'm sort of seeing myself delayed a little bit. But that's okay. At least I can see what people are saying. So uh, anyhow, back to what we were talking about. 
The F is a movable chord. Work on it till you get it. And I've given you different ways to play it, but we're not going to jump on that just yet. We're going to do that just in a few minutes. Let's look at the rest of the chords that are in uh, C. So we've got G, which we've played before. You learned that last week. And I still got my G chord. I'm, I'm going to post both of these. I'll, I'll post your chords in G and your chords in C and E here soon. But we got the F. We got, we got G. G is a, is, is a very important chord in the key of C. It's one of the primary chords. Then our, our, our what I would call the primary, there's actually names for these. I'm not going to get into that just yet. But the, 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 the main chord that we use, it's a minor chord in C, is A minor. It's one of my favorite chords. I always thought A minor is such a melancholy, beautiful chord. And you can kind of do some little cool stuff with it with your fingers. You can bounce some strings. You, you'll hear that, that chord in like Dust in the Wind and a lot of other, other songs. So if you've got C, F, G, and A minor, you've got that really kind of thing that you hear a lot in 50s music. Like a, you got that C, A minor, F, G. Now I just played a more sophisticated kind of F there. And we'll show you that one. It's down there on the bottom beside the C7 here. We're going to look at that in just a little bit. This is, a, this is another kind of F. And like I say, this freaks people out a little bit that I would show people bar chords in the early stages. But I like people to know what's coming. And I like, for, like it when people will accept a challenge and give it a shot. And, uh, and, and try to play something that's a little bit harder than they think. And here again, like I said, I know what everybody mostly wants is they want to be able to jam out. And uh, these learn these bar chords early on and discipline yourself in learning them will get you way ahead of all the other beginner guitar guitar players. So we got A minor. You see how I play it there? I got the one, the two, and the three together. Again, that's your one finger, two finger, three finger, four finger. You can see the dots. I got the numbers on. We've also got a chord called D minor, which appears in C and in, in other keys too. And D minor is a beautiful chord. Now the way I've got it shown here, you would mostly, you can play that A note you, that got, got the red X over here on the top string. Don't play that top string, kind of, kind of avoid that. Now I'm playing with a pick tonight. You don't have to play with a pick. Uh, matter of fact, I think most, most beginners should just start playing out with their thumb. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Just play it with your thumb. Makes it easier. That way you don't have to worry so much about how you hold the pick. But if you want to start playing with a pick, play with a pick too. It matters not. So here I am. I'm playing the D minor. D minor can appear in some unusual and interesting ways that are very colorful and beautiful and dramatic in the key of C. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of that when we go back to Amazing Grace in the key of C. Now we learned A minor last week. I just got a ding, and I wonder if that's Facebook Messenger telling me that I've gone down or something. I do not know. Or I might have been on my phone. Anyway, I'm going to continue on like people can hear me. Hopefully you can. Just making sure the string's working. It looks like it is. Okay. So we got E minor. We learned that last week. It's in the key of G. It's, it serves the same purpose that A minor does in the key of G. Not going to get too heady about that, but... It is the the first. Uh, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not going to minor thirds and all this, but we'll we'll talk about some of the stuff later on. But it, it is the important, the most important chord in G for a minor chord. It's sort of a secondary chord in a in a minor. Now I'm also going to show you a C7. If you know you got C, uh, and you got C7, and we showed C7 I think last week. So it's in. It's also in G too. I put that in there. Then let's look at these two forms of F. And we're going to learn something from this chord in F that when we switch over to E here just in a second. So you see that bar that goes all the way across that one going all the way from here over here. And this black thing means you hold all those strings down. That little black bar there that just means that you're holding one all the way across. Now, you've got notes you're playing down below here, so you're not going to hear this note, this note, or this note, but you put your finger over it. Uh, just, just, just signifies that you're holding that whole fret. 
with your one finger. And then you're putting these fingers underneath. The three, four, uh, the two, three, and four. You're doing it just, just like what you see there, and hopefully you can see that. You're taking this finger, putting this finger here, and then these two like this. And you're playing, look at the A minor chord. See that A minor chord up there? Look how you got that one, two, th one, two, three, kind of, it's kind of a little weird slanty triangle type thing going on here. You're doing that same thing here, just on different strings. Matter of fact, this formation, this two, three, four kind of thing here, this, forget about the numbers around there for now, but this kind of little slanty weird, almost like a little backward L is very important in guitar playing. And so is the D chord, the, the D shape that we use, and so is the G one, because these are all play, chords that can be moved. So a while ago when I was playing this, the um, 50s thing, right? You, you notice when I played this, this F this way, I really can't play these top two notes because they're not part of F. So I lose that good bass sound. So what you do, you learn how to play your F by holding the, this is the F note here on the very top. And you hold your finger all the way across and you put this chord underneath it. Then you got your bass back. So it sounds like this. Then there's another way that people play it. And you know what? I've drawn it up wrong here. So my bad. I must have meant to fix it and didn't fix it. So the F major seventh here, we'll strike that. I'll make sure that it's right when I post it on the uh, on the internet. When I post it, what I'm doing, I'm posting these things to a uh, to a Google Drive where you can download them. But I am going to show you what I meant to put there, okay? There's another very important way that rock and roll and country people and stuff uh, play. Lisa Sweat says, I have small hands, so I don't know if they will spread out that far. They will, Lisa. Believe me, let me tell you this. The best student I've ever had, uh, I mean, bar none, was a young lady. Her name was Emily. I don't know what happened to Emily. I know somewhere she's out there jamming. Uh, she was pretty decent. She had some knowledge, but it just needed to be channeled a little bit. And Emily uh, liked blues. And she was a beginner, and she already had some, some knowledge. But all this stuff I'm showing you, Emily was a small young lady. I'm sure she still is. I bet she's 110 pounds and uh, maybe five foot tall. Very small hands. And she could do it. You don't think you can, but you can't. Matter of fact, to be honest with you, some of the stuff I'm showing you tonight, it's a detriment to me that I have big hands. Uh, I could probably play definitely some of the chords I'm going to show you tonight better if I didn't have big sausage fingers. And the only advantage I have by having large hands is that when it comes to playing scales and stuff, the reason you see me play a lot of blues and stuff, I can reach a long way. I can, because I can just stretch my fingers out for a very long, I can for a very long space so it makes it a little easier when you play in lead lines and stuff like that but when you're playing chords it's always better to have sort of medium to smaller hands honestly and i think some of the better guitar players are the smaller people and and there's a lot of really great jamming ladies out there that they do all this and lisa you can do it too i promise so uh the, the other F I was going to show you is a lot of people, rock and rollers and country play, country people. Now, a classical guitar player would probably really run you down for doing this. Jazz player wouldn't do it. That mean, I mean, jazz player would do it too. They use their thumb, but you can put your thumb up here. You have to kind of you have to kind of hold the guitar like you're reaching out to shake somebody's hand. Here again, you can't do it if your elbows out here like this and you're trying to look at your guitar. You got to kind of reach out like you're reaching out like that, and then you can do it. You see a lot of kind of Johnny Cash, people like it reaching out like it and playing the guitar. That's, it makes it easier to play some of these chords you play with your thumb. But you can take that number one finger here and put it there on this, this, this note here, the second string, right, the first fret. And then you can put this all the way down here like this. You got your second finger on the second fret on the third string. Then reach across, 
with your ring finger and put it on the uh, fifth string down here on the third fret and then your pinky down beside it. And you can hold the, uh, the note across the top with your thumb. It makes a real pretty F. Now, I, I, and I call it F major seventh because if, if you play the bottom note, usually you play the bottom note open. So the reason, what I've done wrong with this illustration here is I've, I've got that one there and that's supposed to be a T for your thumb right here. But the rest of it's right. There should, this one should be slid over to here where this B is. Then you got your two, three, four, just like you see there. This one should be right here where the B is. This E should be open. And this top would be a T there instead of a one for your thumb. And it sounds like this. And you might have heard it like in Fleetwood Mac songs, like. So, but you, you, there's a lot of, you'll hear country players play that. Now, if they don't want that major seventh sound, they just don't play that bottom string. So I could play like I was doing La Bamba or something a while ago. Now, did you notice I could move it down? If I played that all the way down to the bottom, what am I doing there? I'm playing that same movable chord. I'm playing the G. Remember how I did the F here? I slid it up, it's G. Well, now you can do that F and go to a G, and it's the same. That's the open G chord. It's important to learn that one, but then a lot of rock and rollers will play the G that way, and they'll play their A here. Anyway, so I hear I'm giving you some advanced stuff that you don't have to learn, but give it a shot anyway. Uh, learn your open chords first, but as you're playing around, be aware of the fact that you can move these open chords around and put a bar behind them. So in other words, uh, we're going to move down to the key of E here for a second. Uh, first of all, though, let's go back to Amazing Grace and look at it in the key of C. And then we're going to go to E and we're going to wrap up for the night. We'll, we'll get you a hint or a start in the key of E. So you'll know what's coming again. I like to teach people to play in five keys. Now, eventually, you will learn to play in all of them. Uh, and, and learning the bar chords is the key to being able to play all of them. But I like to teach people to play in G, in C, in D, and E. And then anything else you need in the early stages, you can, any other key, if, if one of those keys is not the, what the key you need to sing in, you put one of these things a capo on, and you still play in those keys, only with the capo recreating this nut up here. In other words, the capo takes the place of this, and so if you want to play in the key of A, for instance, like right now we've been playing in G, but if we wanted to play in A, we just put that on there, right? And now Amazing Grace would be... Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound so you see people do this all the time, particularly singer-songwriters. They'll use the capo, James Taylor, people like that. And a lot of times they'll put it up here like that. That's the really cool-looking thing, way to kind of keep your capo aside. And if you need that to say, so there's another little guitar inside thing. A lot of times they'll put it right up here on the top of their guitar when they grab it. So let's look at Amazing Grace and see. We've done it in G. So that's going to be a whole different key. It's going to be a lot lower for me. I can't sing it real high in C. I have to sing low if I'm going to do it in C. Again, I apologize for my singing voice. But here's how I would do it. And now in the second verse, I've done a thing we're going to call some modulation. This is just for you to have some fun, to give you a little bit of variety. And this is, uh, we'll talk about it in a second. Let's, it'll be very standard what I do here first. Um, uh, uh, amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now am found was blind but now i see I played my F that, that harder way 
We could have played it the f bottom four strings. I could have said, Amazing Grace. The C7 we've learned before. How sweet the sound. So you just kind of lose your bass, don't you? You want to have that little bit, as a guitar player, as a listener, I like to show people right up the bat, right off the bat, learn these bar chords. Just work on them. It, it'll be hard to do at first. And the key here, too, is getting your guitar set up so the strings are low. If you've got a guitar that you just bought and you've not gone and gotten what we call set up by somebody professionally, it's worth doing. Go see a, a guy, somebody that does guitar adjustment. A lot of times your friends that play guitar will know how to do it and won't even charge you to do it. I've done it for dozens of people. I'll take their guitar and do a few things to make it easier for the, to play these bar chords. Because you want your strings to sit pretty low. You don't want them to buzz. If you give them too low, they'll buzz. But you want to be able to play these chords nice and smooth and pretty. These bar chords. But when I was playing that, Amazing Grace, that, that I played used the big F. So, so I, I here let me show you the one where I use it with my thumb, okay? Where I do the, the thumb thing. Um, let's see. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. That save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. So a lot of people like to play that rather than doing the bar over the overall string. They like reaching the thumb across. I think it's important, though, that you learn how to play this bar. And we'll talk about that later. Because, you know, people want to be able to play these pop songs that they've heard. So, like, you wouldn't be able to play a song like More Than a Feeling by Boston if you didn't play your bar chords right. Because it's got stuff like this. <laughs> so, you know, that's coming. And you want to be able to do that stuff. Particularly since most people want to play rock and pop and country, you know your, your country chords are going to be there, and you and you, again your all your lead notes come off of these bar chords. So take the time, practice it, practice that technique. Again, you're not you're not hitting the strings with this part of your finger, this meaty part of your finger. You're you're hitting it with kind of this top edge up here. This part right up here is where you're hitting the uh, with your finger. And once you kind of get that technique, you realize you're slanting. You're, you're moving your wrist forward a little bit there. And you get, here again, it's kind of like reaching out and shaking somebody's hand. Well, it's more like shaking a hand to do that. It's more like just, uh, I don't know what it's like. It's like playing a bar chord. <laughs> but you will get it. I promise you will. So I'm going to show you the second verse of Amazing Grace here. And what I've done is something a little tricky and different. I've done a thing that's called a chord modulation. Now, you'll hear a lot of piano players do this. And I like, since we're learning a bunch of chords, I like to show you how to use those chords and do something that just, kind of say, it'll sort of kind of impress people a little bit more. So we did we did the very traditional country type type in that first verse. Now, in the second verse, we're going to do a little bit more of a jazzy or, what would I say, folky or, uh, I'm going to look a little more stylistically, a little more, uh, I think I would say more folky kind of version of it. And we're going to use what we call some chord substitution. The thing you're going to see is like in the first verse here, I went from C to C7. And this one, I'm going to go from C to E minor. Instead of using the F, I'm going to use the A. And a lot of these chords are a little bit interchangeable, uh, particularly if you want to create a mood, a very somber mood or a very uh, worshipful mood, right? So let me show you. I'm going to play from Was Blind, but now I see here at this part right here. Then I'm going to go into this. So this is going to sound traditional. This last little bit, and I'll lead in, and then we'll go into this part here. You hear what I'm going, what I'm going with with these chords. So practice this too, and just know that these chords can be traded out sometimes if they're all in the same key. So here we go. I'm going to start from uh, Was Blind, but now I see Was Blind, but now I see. Here we go, a little bit different this time. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears 
say a little more Celtic a little more classical a little more soulful a little more worshipful I guess is what I would say so there we go practice with that this week and here again I'll post this uh, and put links in the description to where you can go download these and uh, let's move before I leave I want to get you thinking also about the key of E so I've got this PDF here that has its chords and it's key of C at the top you see key of C up here right well, if we go to the second page of it, I've got key of E. I've got it kind of hid there in the, in the back. But here's the key of E. And a lot of the same chords you know already. It's just if you want to really practice these bar chords, I'm giving you the key of E because it's a hugely used um, key that people play in. It's one of the most popular keys ever for blues. Blues, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 75% of blues is in E and A. And so if you, we're going to also, we'll learn the key of A. I mean, they might be, maybe do that next week. I'm thinking that's probably what we'll do. We'll probably do A and D next week. So we're going to have the five major chords I want you, five major keys I want you to learn. I want you to learn G, C, E, A, and D. Those five. And then we use capos for everything else for a while. I might do an intermediate class. I think what I'm going to do is about seven or eight lessons of this beginner. And if you dig in deep and just do that beginner thing for three or four months, two or three months maybe, it might, depends on how much work you put into it, then you're really ready for an intermediate class. We're ready to start doing some lead guitar and some fancier things and some of the rock techniques that you've heard your whole life. But this is where everybody starts. So now we're in a key of E. Now, we learned the A minor a while ago. The A minor was like this, right? Well, the E is just like the A minor. You just go, you just move everything up, up this direction, this direction, up the up the neck of the guitar. So here we go. Here's the, so the E sounds like this. Matter of fact, you can put the E, the E and the A minor together sound kind of neat. You go E, E. Like the House of the Rising Sun has got an e minor, uh, A minor and an E in it. Trying to turn this where you can see the guitar better. Ah! I hate to think I'm going off the off the screen with that. Okay, so <laughs> back to key V. Then we got the the chord A. Now last week I showed you A seven, which was I told you to play it that way, and it was just a here. We'll go back and look right quick at it. Let's take a second to pull it up. I put the A seven down here. See the two and the three there. Well, to play a real A, you want to play that middle note too. If you can make it happen, you know, you want that little middle note down here, which is not on. So it's not going to be a, an A7. It's going to be a full on A. And that A, I put multiple ways to play in the A on here because there's multiple ways that guitar players pull it off. And what, what you're doing, you're trying to learn how to play the sort of things that piano players do or, or other what we call multi-tone instruments. And that's the thing that's cool about a guitar is it's the easiest instrument, I think, that plays multi-tones. In other words, like you play an oboe, you're playing one, one note at a time. You play a sax, you're playing one note at a time. Play a fiddle, you can usually play two notes at a time. Uh, but you can't play three or four or five. That's the awesome thing about a guitar is you can play as many as six notes at a time. Some people can make it sound like they got more than that, but generally it's six notes what you got that's the most you can do. But that's pretty much, you know, with a, with a piano, you can play as many as ten notes at a time because you got your... You're fine. Of course, you can hold a sustain pedal down and get more than that. But but one of the point I'm making is, is from a, just a portable instrument that you can do six tones. That's awesome. That's why the guitar is such an awesome instrument. It's very versatile in that in that regard, and it's a, a powerful tool. That's why that's why one person with a guitar can go out and entertain people. It's hard for one person with a sax to go out and do it. I mean, you can go and get some place where it's uh, you know you got some atmosphere and stuff, and you can allude toward chords and stuff but you can't play them but you can with the guitar and so what lisa says here 
Got to go, y'all. Uh, these pitiful people here want me to heat up those sweet potatoes and collard greens. Lisa, thank you for dropping by. God bless you. Thanks. I'm glad you watched a little bit of this tonight. Um, maybe you want to pick up the guitar, Lisa. I'd be great. I'd love to see you try to play some, some chords and stuff. Have, have a great evening. Eddie says, couldn't play piano for for same reason. <laughs> oh, Eddie, you can do it, man. Piano is not that, that hard. Uh, piano, I think, is easier than guitar. I just never have learned had done the official technique. Let's go on and finish up with that with E here. So I'm gonna do this about ten more minutes here, five minutes more, and then we'll we'll go on. So the A the way I play it, you see I've got two twos here? Two two. Now this is me as a guy, and I find out most guys that have big fingers do it this way. Now I've I've seen young ladies that have small fingers use these three fingers to play those three notes, and they'll put it here just like that. And they'll, and they'll cover off, and I can't hardly do that, man. I mean, I can make it, if I concentrate, I can do it. I, I The way I've always been able to do it is I kind of put this this uh, uh, bird finger over those two strings, and I can make, I can, I can do it with one, with one finger. And most guys can. And you reach across this other finger and get that, this, uh, this string here. So all together. So that's the way I try to teach people play it. Most people like playing it that way. Now, I'm going to show you a B. The B that most people learn is on the bottom down here. It's really, it's a B7, but I like people to learn the real B. But this is the one that almost everybody teaches you right off the bat. And people love this chord. It's a very cool chord. They've heard it their whole life. They've heard it like in uh, Folsom Prison Blues. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh... You go up here, you make this triangle, kind of like a like a, a triangle on top. You can see what I've got. I've got you got your one, two, and three finger here, and you take your four and put it down on the very bottom. And so the chord sounds like this. Now you don't want to play that top string. See how I've got uh, the X here? But the thing that country players do, and the reason they like this chord, is that you, you can do a thing you call bouncing the string. And what they do, they take this, this bird finger, and they'll move that. Up. So I'm playing, I'll play the B minor, or B7. And you'll hear people do it all the way down. You can do it down here on the seventh fret, too. That's actually an E, that's an E7. So you got your E chord, you got your A chord. The way you really play a B though is you do a bar chord. You put your one finger right there on the second fret and you go across. And this is a little tricky for people, but try it. You don't have to learn it right off the bat. I usually put my thumb kind of over toward the top right here and I put my pinky finger down. I hold those three, those three finger, those three strings there. Now it's hard to do this way. It's easier to do if you do like you're like you're shaking somebody's hand. If you just go straight up the neck like this right here, and you just put your first finger there and your pinky finger there. And you'll see a lot of people do this. I've seen a lot of rock and rollers. They'll take this this finger here, this this uh, ring finger, and put it over the top of their pinky. And I've seen a lot of guys do it this way. So that's another movable chord, and the B is typically right, or it's always right there. But that's the way I play it. I kind of let, I kind of reach up, and it makes my hands stronger to do this. And you just kind of practice grabbing the guitar like you're going to shake somebody's hand really stout with your left hand. Now this seems like a lot. This for a beginner, listen, don't knock yourself out. That's hard to play in the beginning. Play the standard old B7 up here if you want to. The thing is, the B7 doesn't always work in a song. Sometimes you want the real B. I will show you again how that Johnny Cash thing goes. The reason people like it is like. Right? So you just play that B7. You've heard that your whole life if you've been around country music at all. You got that B7. I'm not playing the pinky part down here yet because there's no need to. I need to go. stretch. 
And that's that's in that song. That's the signature lick in that whole song, right? When I was just a baby, my mama told me son. So you can play Folsom Prison Blues if you learn the key V. And that's a time keeps dragging on, right? Now the next chord, another movable bar chord, practice it. Listen, you don't have to master these things right off the bat to have fun to start playing songs. A lot of people never learn their bar chords. But the guitar players that become great guitar players start learning and start learning them early. So we're going to go down to C sharp minor. You see the little pound key, pound sign? That means sharp in the world of music. And if you see a tiny little B, that means flat. All that sharp means is you're up, a, you're up one fret. So uh, I'm not going to get into the C bar chord yet. Well, let's do. Let's say so here's B. We just played B. Turns out if you go up just one fret, you're playing C, B, and C. You go up one, two more frets, you're playing D. How about that? That's why I know when I'm a, when I'm playing lead guitar. I know I can do something like this. And it's going to work because I'm playing around the, with those little notes where I know where the, the D is, the D blues notes. Anyway, so the C minor, you remember the A minor we learned in C a while ago? The A minor, that pretty soulful chord, kind of melancholy chord. Well, if you put the bar over on the fourth fret all the way across and play that same thing with... Instead of using these three fingers to do it, you're going to use these three fingers to make it happen. All that that C sharp minor is is the uh, is that A minor slid up four frets. I remember I, the reason I learned this chord. There was a song I really liked called Sister Golden Hair. You never heard it. It's a song um, a group called America did, and I always liked it. And it had that chord in it. Dun, dun, dun. And you had a little slide part there, but it's a. And all I'm playing is a C, is a set C sharp minor to an A, to an E. And it, it would go something like a. Well, I tried to make it Monday, but I got something written up. I'm not, I'm not playing it right. But all these chords that I'm just getting ready to show you are in that song. That'd be a great song for you to look up and find the, the chords to it and play it because you'll be able to play it if you learn what's on this sheet right here that I'm doing. So you got your C minor. And listen, you're not going to get these things fast. Be patient with yourself. Don't expect it to happen fast. Just practice doing Find a song you like. And then just... Real purposefully place your fingers. Do it slow. Do everything slow to start. But make sure that you that you make your fingers do what they have to do to make the chords sound sound right. Now, where a while ago when I was playing like this on the on the bar that that B, when you play these minor chords, you're going to have to put your thumb back behind the neck of the guitar. It's got to sit back here for you to press them and make them all sound clean. So there's a little bit of technique, and you watch me change as I as I. See how my thumb's on top up here again? So, and, and you know, that, that, that's, that's just the, you're gonna, you, you, you'll eventually it'll become like second nature. You won't even think about it. And that's what's kind of cool. So we got that. Now, and I put up here another way to play an A, just so you'll know. A lot of guitar players, that see that one going across here all the way? You're not even going to hear this note and this note, but you put your one finger across it anyway. You put your pinky finger down here. So a lot of times you're hearing A played this way. It's, pretty, it's really pretty kind of full, very full uh, way to play an A. So a lot of people play their A that way. Now the F minor down here, 
F sharp minor, we've read F sharp minor. Remember we've learned E minor already? So what does that F sharp minor look like? It is a E minor slid up two frets. Instead of using these two fingers to play it, you're using these two fingers to play the notes that are below the bar. So I'm gonna put my finger all the way across here. I'm gonna put this down here. And then the G sharp minor is so simple. You just slide up two more frets, same chord. And then I've got the B7 I showed you a while ago. And then I want you to know one other way to play, play A7. We learned A7, it was this way. We learned that in the key of G. But you can also play it by putting a bar all the way across all four strings here and just put your third finger right here. Right, right down that, this is called a G note, the third fret down at the very bottom. So just look at the way it's drawn there and you'll see. Now, this chord you hear a lot in blues. Like say we were gonna do uh, Pride and Joy by Stevie Ray Vaughan. It's something like, he plays it in E, it's in the key of E. Now he, I think he tunes his guitar down a little bit, so he might not be able to play along with it. He might have to retune the guitar down a little bit. I think he plays, a, he tunes his guitar a half step low. But it's like, have you heard about love gift sight to the blind? My baby's love that calls the sun to shine. She's my sweet little thing. See it? It's real 70 sound. That's, that's A7 of the chord. She my pride and joy. He has some licks in there. She my sweet little baby. That's that B. I'm her little lover boy. So there's stuff. We'll, we'll learn all that mess later. But that's a, a great song to learn. E, A, B, A7. And he does stuff. We'll talk about blues later how you play parts of chords to play blues so tonight we've gone over everything the only thing i wanted to show you was e7 and that's uh if you got your e chord up here where you learned this first d at the very top i'm not at the left up there you'll notice to play an e7 you can just take this finger off this this uh ring finger and it's saying you get a little bit of the seventh sound because this note this d note uh, gives you a little bit of it. When I say that, the seventh sound, the dominant seventh, is a kind of a jazzy, blue, more of a bluesy sound, I would say. But to really nail that bluesy sound, you put your pinky down here. And you see, so you, you play this, this little note here open. You've got your E, take this nut finger off, put this pinky down. And then you get the really blues sound. Makes you lip on a curl. Right? Now here's a challenge for you. Amazing Grace that we were doing a while ago, you could, you could take this yourself and see if you can figure out what chords go where and play it in the key of E. I'll play you the way I do it. I'm not even gonna talk much about it, but we'll, we'll leave with that. Amazing Grace. No, it's not, that's not right. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. That say, uh, what's it gonna be? Rip. Oh, rich. Okay, now this is a chord I've not shown you. This is called an F sharp. So we learned F a while ago this way. F's back here. F sharp's gonna be one, one up. So I didn't put this on the list, but if you watch the video, this is an extra you throw in here. Amazing grace, E my E seven. How sweet, there's my A, the sound E. That C, there's that C sharp minor, a wrench. Now here's the, this is like an E slid up two frets. And it's the it's an F sharp, and just a regular F sharp. Like me, there's my B. And I can play a B7 if I want to. How precious the that grace appeared the hour I first believed. I'll leave you with that tonight. I know I've thrown a lot at you, 
this lesson really could go for two weeks. I'm still going to come back next week and do another one. Like I say, I think I've got planned about six or seven lessons in the beginning. And it, again, if you hunker down and learn these things, you'll make it. You'll get through it. I think my stream has died. Oh, man, I hate that. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, crap. Lost my stream. And we'll end it.